Uh, so just very quick, we are going to start with the mayor candidates. They're each going to get four questions, and we have two minutes to answer those questions. So we're going to get right into it because we know we're short of time. So first question is around jobs. SEIU, please. Uh, my name is Renee Guerra, and I work for Bear County Juba Dollar Trading Center. I've been there for seven years, uh, working as a JDO. Uh, currently, I'll say in the last uh, three months, I've been working in the laundry department. Uh, candidates, this is a two-part question, and it's on jobs. So the first part is one in eight workers in San Antonio work in the hospitality industry, and many uh, workers in San Antonio have low-paying jobs. The wages are at po poverty level and it makes it hard for them to support their families. The, where I work at, I know the last shift I was on, at least 25% of the people have two jobs. Some have three jobs in order to support their families, and they're all minimum wage jobs. What will you do to ensure the minimum of $15 wage for all workers in the city, and will you campaign $15 an hour to private sectors throughout all of San Antonio? So first, I will continue to support a path, an accelerated path, within the city organization to a $15 an hour minimum wage. But first, let's be clear, every San Antonian, whether they're in the public sector or the private sector, deserves a living wage. Uh, because when we have such levels of underemployment in our community and families are having to work two and three and four jobs just to make ends meet, that means their children are not getting the attention and the help at home that they, they need and deserve. And that's why it's also not just wages, it's public services as well. So I will continue to support uh, a wage standard within the city organization. In addition to that, I want to begin the process of incorporating stronger wage standards within city contracts. And I do support, and I was at the ground floor with starting to create a public-private partnership policy that incorporates those same kinds of wage and labor standards within public-private partnerships. We know that if we address the wage standards within the city organization, that leaves out a vast portion of the work that is done on taxpayer dollars. And any work that is being done on your money needs to make sure that it lifts the standard of living for all San Antonians. Thank you. Manuel Medina, uh, candidate for mayor. Yes, yes, I do support that. Because let me tell you, it makes no sense when we have 4.8% unemployment, but 20% people living in poverty. That means people are working, but not earning enough to escape poverty. Right. And that's because they're not making enough. So what am I going to do at the city? Three things specifically. The first, we're going to get to $15 an hour sooner rather than later with the efforts of TOP, Unite Here, Move On, and many of the organizations that are here this evening, it was your fight that led to the 1375 that we have today. So congratulations to what you have done so far, and I'm going to be a partner with you as we move on to $15 an hour for our employees at the city and the county. Additionally, if anyone wants a contract with the city, and remember, we have, our budget is $2.4 billion. If anyone wants to win a contract with the city, they have to pay their employee the minimum of a livable wage. I think that's very important. And it escaped a lot of people along the way. Right. Additionally, we have to incentivize private business. Just like we do to get them here to begin with, tax breaks, discounts on their saws and CPS uh, rates. Well, let's do that now so that they can keep a little more money in the company and so that they can pay their employees a livable wage. So those are three things specifically that I believe uh, that we need to do. Now, to make that happen, we need a new city manager. Yeah. 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 Because this city manager has been the best friend to special interests, to paid lobbyists, and that corner of the world. And regardless of who's mayor, if she is still the city manager, nothing's going to change. And that's why I pledge to you, pledge to you, on May 6th, we will have a new mayor. On May 7th, a new city manager. On May 8th, we're going to level the playing field here in the city of San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. I would also approve $15 an hour, and I would stop the tax abatements to all these corporations that want to come into our city and, and hire people 
at a, at a, at a wage that cannot support them unless they have two or three jobs. Now, you are about inclusion. You said so in all your opening statements. Yet you're excluding candidates that are working hard out here that have the same kind of concepts as in order to give opportunity to the community of San Antonio. <coughs> I come from the west side. I live in the south side. What is and your yet, name? I am Antonio Diaz and I'm carrying for mayor. What is your name? Antonio Diaz. <coughs> Thank you, Thank you. Okay. Second I question. should be allowed to continue to participate. Question. Uh, part two of this question, candidates, is in, in addition, uh, will you uh, move an ordinance that will uh, specifically require a company that receives tax abatements or any public funds uh, from the city uh, make sure that they provide sick days, uh, minimum wage of fifteen dollars, support the rights uh, for. Uh, members of these companies to organize unions and do hiring from low-income communities and from formerly incarcerated and or homeless people. Do you want to say more? Yeah, say more. Uh, yeah, I mean, every San Antonian deserves a living wage and a standard of living that doesn't require them to work two and three and four jobs, especially when city funds are involved we should support that standard. So yes, I would support an ordinance like that. The answer is yes. I believe in your right to organize. I believe in your right to collect the bargaining. And I believe in your right to collect dues without the government getting in your way. But what have I seen? The city gives away tax abatements to companies coming into San Antonio, or just recently, to give you an example, maybe a little bit off topic, but same scenario. We gave a company $500,000 to build apartments here in Southtown on the condition that a certain amount of those apartments were affordable housing. Well, along the way, they said, you know what? We couldn't do the affordable housing component, but can we keep the $500,000? And this council said, yes. And that is just the epitome of a pay-to-play system that we have today, where candidates get their contributions, special interests get their special favors, and taxpayer, you and me, get stuck with the bill. Okay, uh, second question, please, for the second question about the neighborhoods. please. Good evening, candidates. Thank you for being here. Uh, Sam Shell, top. Uh, this question speaks to the issue of neighborhoods and specifically to development, uh, new development in the neighborhoods. Um, San Antonio is one of the fastest growing cities in the country, yet we see underinvestment in entire parts of the city, which drastically affect the quality of life for our residents. Through gentrification, we see families that have been living in neighborhoods for generations get pushed out. We see projects, developments like Hemisphere Park, that don't provide affordable housing or much needed funding for repair and or infrastructure projects to the most marginalized neighborhoods. What kind of policies are you gonna to create to ensure a percentage of affordable housing is included in each development project that has any city funding or tax abatements? And how will you balance the needs of newer areas in the city with the infrastructure needs of inner city areas? I think I forgot to say my name. I'm Ron Nuremberg. <laughs> Thank you for having me this morning. This evening. I think this is the most important policy issue that we have to take up under the new administration is to deliver a compassionate and comprehensive housing policy for the city of San Antonio. We can no longer be satisfied with band-aids addressing this issue. We have to address head-on the issue of gentrification so that every San Antonian can age in place. We have to have a policy in place that allows people to enjoy when infrastructure is redeveloped, when infrastructure is improved, that allows us to improve your streets and your sidewalks and your drainage areas, but allows for those families that have been living there for years to stay in their homes. Um, we see that on the west sides, especially on the west side, there is a huge number of families who would be vulnerable to high tax increases. We need to make sure that tax increases are held in place as, as property values grow because of infrastructure investment. We have to make sure that we demand more affordable units uh, from development as it occurs. 
But what needs to happen is that we have to stop relying on tax incentives and abatements to produce the kind of development that we want to see. Right now in the city of San Antonio, it costs a developer less money to go out and sprawl territory and continue to build homes that stretch our infrastructure, that makes it harder and harder to develop and to uh, deliver public transportation. And yet it's more costly to develop inside the loop, inside 1604 in an affordable way. That's, that's making your rents rise, that's making property taxes rise, and that makes an unsustainable housing development. My first priority, if we're going to enjoy this economic revitalization anywhere in our city, my first priority will be to deliver a compassionate and comprehensive housing policy that allows you, your family, to age in place. Thank you. Because of the housing policies of today's mayor and this council, the issue of gentrification is being felt across the whole city, not only downtown and the surrounding neighborhoods, but throughout the city. Just a few years ago, the average house cost $150,000. Now it's $225,000. So the issue is a citywide issue. Now, people today are being taxed out of their home, are being code compliance out of their home, and we need to do something about it. I mean, the mayor will happily tell you she didn't increase your tax rate. But property appraisals skyrocket. My standing rule will be, if your appraisal rises, your tax rate will go down. Bottom line is, because people are losing their home. Code compliance. There's investors out there that are in the neighborhood knocking on your door, asking you if you want to sell. Of course you don't want to sell. But then they poke around, look around, see something wrong on the porch, something wrong by the garage, and then run to code compliance at the city. Code compliance comes out, finds you $3,000. Well, what can you do? The senior says, what can you do? I don't have $3,000. So they sell your home. So people are being taxed out of their home, code compliance out of their home, and we need a mayor that's not in the pocket of the special interest and the paid lobbyists in town to stand up and speak up and fight back for the people of City of San Antonio. And we had an opportunity. We had an opportunity to help people with this bond. $850,000, which does include some good things, about $650 million of streets and drainage, parks and rec, good things. But at the same time, we're giving away $200 million to special interests. Do we really need to give away $50, $50 million to beautify Broadway? $25 million to Zachary Corporation to build a hotel downtown? $15 million to, uh, to build a bridge on uh, Harburger Park? And $10 million to UTSA? The answer is no. The priorities have not been there. They will change on May 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, before we keep going, we do have a timekeeper. Uh, if you guys can listen to the recording, just we kind of for time sake, just make sure we, 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 we keep rolling and make sure that everybody gets a chance to really answer those questions, okay? So we're now we're going to our third question, uh, which revolves around immigrant rights. We're going to do it in Spanish and we're going to do it in English. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Mercedes Reyes. Estoy haciéndole unas pre, una pregunta a los votantes, a los candidatos, y mi pregunta es derecho de inmigrantes, protecciones hecha por un miembro inmigrante. Ha habido una fuerte retórica negativa de parte del gobierno federal y estatal en contra de nuestra comunidad inmigrante, que no ha hecho nada más que atemorizar a mi familia y a toda la comunidad. Y recientemente hemos visto ciudades a través del Estado que crean un, en, un entorno inhóspito y ponen a nuestras familias en peligro de separación. A. Promovería un esfuerzo para emitir identificaciones municipales a todos los residentes de San Antonio. ¿Por qué o por qué no? B. ¿Qué está dispuesto a hacer como alcaldes? o miembros del concilio para proteger a nuestras comunidades de inmigrantes. Gracias. So I'm going to just say it very quick in, in, in English. 
so there have been a, there have been a very strong negative rhetoric from both the federal and the state governments against our immigrant communities that has done nothing but incite fear in our families and throughout our communities. We recently seen raids and other actions across the state which has made living here feel unsafe and not welcoming and has put our families in danger of being separated. As mayor, are you willing to protect our immigrant communities by publicly supporting and moving a municipal ID program and will you be a proactive voice against ICE infiltration of our county jail and our local law enforcement? You have two minutes. Short answer is yes on the ID. And uh, last year, I led a movement here in San Antonio to formalize our historic attitude that police officers are not immigration officers here in the city of San Antonio. <laughs> this issue of immigration is personal to me and personal to you, to a lot of people. I, you may have read that I was born on the south side, maybe a little further south, and you would think in a little place called Mexico. And at the age of three, I crossed the border with my mom, maybe swam a little bit, into McAllen. Then went to San Antonio, El Paso, Los Angeles. Well, I grew up as a Dream Act student. But I also grew up as an American, speaking English, pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, singing the Star Spangled Banner. I didn't know I didn't have all my papers, so I was 17. My friends wanted to go across the border. I go to my mom, hey, I'm going to Mexico this weekend. She looks at me says, no, you're not. And then I went, why not? I'm going to go have a good time. Well, she sat me down, told me why, and then I agreed. I wasn't going to Mexico that weekend. <laughs> I saw her challenges, like I'm sure you all saw some of your parents, or your, your personal, or even your grandparents, or even before that. How our immigrant parents do the job that a lot of people don't want to do. Pick the crops, clean the babies, wash the dishes mow the lawns, but I've also seen how their children, this generation of Americans, are today's architects, engineers, doctors, and why not the next mayor of the city of San Antonio? So this issue is personal to all of us. I carry that experience with me, the city hall, and that's why my answer is yes to the ID, and that's why I've been fighting this fight. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, and this issue is personal to me and my family as well. And let's be clear, um, you're looking for strength and leadership on this issue. And that doesn't necessarily equate to the volume of one's voice. But let's let, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully to me right now. When I'm mayor of San Antonio, no one, regardless of immigration status, will feel unsafe or unwelcome in San Antonio. And that is because it doesn't matter if you're an immigrant, documented or undocumented, or you're a refugee, it doesn't matter where you live, when you got here, you all deserve the right to prosper in a great city. As far as the policy goes, SAPD is not going to enforce federal immigration. That is the policy we have today. That is the policy that will remain regardless of threat. Uh, from other outside governments. We wouldn't want SAPD checking your tax return, let alone dealing with federal immigration. With regard to the, with regard to the uh, municipal ID, I think that is certainly a worthy idea, and I would support it. We have to make sure that we uh, vet it through the citizens and the residents that are going to be impacted by it. Uh, but that is, an, that is a uh, solution to an issue that many communities are already adopting, so I would. Uh, but this issue is changing. There are threats all around our community. And as you will see from my record that I've already established as your District 8 City Councilman, yes. the first words out of my mouth as your mayor will be all are welcome here. La, la embestida de, de México pidiendo refugio y luego lo sacaron los policías de aquí de San Antonio le quebraron la pierna, lo llevaron al hospital yo hice un vigila allá afuera con mis compañeros 
hasta que nos arrestaron a los cinco. No ha estado encarcelado por defender derechos de los migrantes. El único candidato. Porque cuando andan buscando a alguien que va a defender los derechos de los migrantes, aquí estoy. Y yo soy candidato para alcalde. Pero sí, ustedes están hablando de ser inclusivos y de, de defender derechos de, de los humanos, pero excluyen a candidatos que están luchando por años y años aquí por la comunidad. ¿Cómo se ve eso? Mal, mal. Muy mal. Me deben mal. incluir. Yo ya he hecho el esfuerzo. Good evening. My name is Manuel Garcia. And currently, 51% of formerly incarcerated people are unemployed, and 45% of these individuals are head of household with family to support. People need a fair chance at jobs, a fair chance at housing, along with mental health treatment as necessary. Will you move an ordinance to have all employees in San Antonio provide job applications with a second chance by, by disallowing questions about a person's criminal record on job applications? Well, I was proud to cast a vote in support of a ban the box ordinance in San Antonio. We'll continue to support that. Um, with regard to criminal justice in general, we have to get back to restorative justice. We have to get back to orienting our criminal justice system here locally around the idea of restitution. When we have people who are formally incarcerated, who are left outside of opportunity, our community is not whole. So with regard to any policy, whether it's a hiring policy, whether it's a contracting opportunity or anything else, we need to make sure, just like with immigration, that all San Antonians are treated fairly and treated equally. And that goes for hiring, certainly, uh, for second chance hirees. Thank you. And thank you all for having me. The mayor is going to, our sitting mayor, is going to be standing alone uh, at a debate. I don't want to let that happen, so I'm going to depart right now to make sure that she knows and the public knows that this is a contested race and that on May 6th we will have a new mayor. I think you be, before you go on, uh, it's going to be a question that's going to be asked of you, just like a few, few minutes more, and then, then that's it. The, the answer is yes. We've uh, successfully banned the box at the county and uh, at the city. And just a little background. When I was elected chairman of the Berry County Democratic Party, I pledged that I wasn't going to focus only on winning elections but also advancing an agenda. Yes, this last November, for example, we won 47 of 52 races, all 16 countywide races, even elected a new sheriff in town, Javier Salazar. Yeah. But I'm most proud of the agenda we've been able to advance over the last few years. We started with pre-K for SA, with Mayor Castro, I think his family was here earlier. We moved forward with equality in the NDO. We fought for veterans, and the Hazelwood Legacy Act at the state legislature. We made sure that police officers are not immigration officers. And last year, just a few months ago, with the leadership of Steve Huerta, if Steve's here, if you could please stand up, he led the fight to make sure that we banned the box in the city of San Antonio. But there's so much more to do. We're talking about a livable wage, affordable housing, leveling the playing field. And that's why I'm running for mayor. I want to be the voice of the people of San Antonio. I, I want to be the voice of the people of San Antonio. With, only with your support can I get there. I'm not going to have a million dollars. But like I tell people, I want a million friends. On May 6th, we will have a new mayor. May 7th, a new city manager. May 8th, a level playing field and a fair shot a liberal wage for working families in San Antonio, a fair shot for a second chance Democrats, a fair shot for our seniors, a fair shot for our immigrants. Ladies and gentlemen, on May 6th, San Antonio will elect the voice of the people, the people's mayor, Manuel Medina. Gracias. So, so Laquila Garcia, thank you, Manuel, is going to ask a question, then we're going to have Antonio Diaz go for a few minutes. But Laquila, please, San hey, Diaz have to leave. My name is Laquita Garcia. I'm the lead organizer with Texas Organizing Project. And first of all, I want to thank the candidates and constituents as well for being with us tonight. 
my name is Jessica Zuan. I'm the immigration organizer also at Texas Organizing Project. As you've heard, our San Antonio for All platform was created by um, top members and staff um, surveying seven different districts and collecting hundreds of surveys to come up with the San Antonio, San Antonio for All platform. As a result of those surveys, we found that there's four top pillars in which the community has said that these are the issues that affect our families each and every day of our lives. That's good jobs, neighborhoods of opportunity, our immigrant rights, and criminal justice reform. So with that being said, we're going to ask you here publicly tonight um, to sign off on our San Antonio for All platform as a way of saying that should you win the mayoral election, that you're willing to work with us in the community as well in order to assure that these policy changes are implemented while you are in office. So if you agree, you can come up and get a marker from Jessica and she'll be glad to. So I believe we're going to move on to the city council seats now. Thank you, Manuel. Have a good night. So thank you for the very kind. And now, before we go, I want to give Mr. Diaz two minutes to say what your platform is. I want to make sure he gets that chance to speak for two minutes. So, for favor, be start. But I want to thank also the city council for being very patient with us and waiting for this. So please, un fuerte aplauso para Antonio Diaz. Sus organizaciones hablan de inclusive, inclusive a, 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 a la comunidad, pero cuando pero, excluyen a candidatos. Pero lo, lo estoy incluyendo ahorita, por favor. Está incluyendo por dos minutos, bueno, sí. y por eso lo aprecio, claro. pero no me incluyeron totalmente. Eso va mal, va a empezar. Pero para decirles, es lo que trabajo, mira, yo se, me, me senté, estuve en la, en la mesa del condado, del, del programa de reentro para los eh, es que están es que ex encarcelados solo que hablan de, 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 de estos temas y yo ya he participado en esto por años con el condado con la ciudad y, y no es fácil porque no me quieren ahí no me quieren ahí porque yo peleo con nuestra gente como me vieron ahorita no soy dejado y no voy a ser dejado yo soy alcalde de ustedes y no voy a dejar que le hagan daño a nuestra comunidad porque ahorita lo que está pasando con esta gentrificación, que están entrando más y más corporaciones nuevas y más que, que están haciendo apartamentos por todos lados bien, bien costosos, le van a subir el precio a sus impuestos a ustedes y los van a mover de su comunidad. Yo no voy a dejar que pase eso. Yo no voy a dejar que pase eso. Si me eligen a mí. Pero tienen que votar por Antonio Díaz. Si votan por los que se fueron ahorita, están votando por uno que es millonario y por otro que es, ya es parte del problema. El Estado aquí en el concilio y qué ha hecho para cambiarlo no ha hecho nada tengan eso en mente no sé si qué membresía son o si ya vienen partidos son, son, son ustedes con ellos si son con ellos pues no les puedo cambiar la mente pero los estoy diciendo si quieren a alguien que realmente va a defender a la comunidad que va a defender a la gente soy yo no ellos porque yo 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 ha crecido pobre aquí en esta vecindad y ha subido y soy activista para los derechos humanos un activista que en este edificio ha tenido muchas juntas hasta con el juez Peña por años y años hablábamos de los problemas la problema de nuestra comunidad y nuestra gente y aquí estoy ahora corriendo por alcalde y pidiéndole sus votos I ask for your vote I'm Antonio Díaz I've been a human rights activist civil rights activist I sat on the board of, on the reentry program and on the reentry program we talked about social justice about all the problems that everybody coming back into our community has and about our community actually accepting them back. I, I can read, man. But I wasn't given the full time everybody else was. Respect the process. Respect, the process, uh, respect being gentrified. Respect being trod upon. Respect that. And don't respect you. injustice. And I don't respect injustice. I fight against it. And, and I'll you. tell you right now, as your mayor, I will fight against all injustice that is brought upon you by any corporation, by anyone feeling that they are better than you. There's no one better than you, no one better than me. We're all equal. We fight for equal rights for everybody. Those are human rights.
Gracias. Gracias.